Well, it's Monday afternoon after the Ohio State Buckeyes put forth that convincing win everybody's been looking forward to seeing with a 63-10 win over Western Kentucky. It's officially in the rearview mirror, and it's time to take a look at the tape. A little later than we normally do. Usually we're live at 7 a.m., but had a little schedule change today, so we're doing it in the afternoon instead. But we've still got the same great content coming your way. It's all coming up next as Anthony Meglin and I go inside the film room with the Buckeyes next on the Buckeye Breakdown Podcast. We've got the whole crew together as we cover Ohio State with our instant analysis from Ohio State. There's something that doesn't feel right. Unbelievable effort from him today. Is EJ Liddell going to crack the first team all Big Ten? I think he can be the guy. I'm not trying to start a quarterback controversy. He seems to have the durability. He certainly has the toughness. This is the question on a lot of people's minds here. Welcome to Buckeye Breakdown. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Buckeye Breakdown Podcast. I'm Brendan Gulick, along with Anthony Meglin. Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated, of course, part of the SI Media Group. We are on the Fan Nation Network and uh, glad to have this podcast for you, streaming live every day, uh, usually 7 a.m. during the week. But again, uh, a little schedule change today that bumped us back into the afternoon. But uh, we're talking Ohio State football each and every day as we get you ready for uh, all that is to come for the Buckeyes and evaluating what we've seen so far and certainly in week three, we saw a pretty impressive win, frankly, on both sides. The offense finally looked uh, really, really good. I thought the defense did a, a nice job against an offense we expected was going to be able to move the ball against them a little bit. Um, it was a really good test. And now for a lot of people, the season, quote unquote, really starts. And, and I don't personally like to think about it quite in those same uh, black and white terms, but there are a lot of people that, that said, okay, you know, first three weeks, fine. Wake me up when Notre Dame's here. Well, it's here. So let's see what we can learn from the film. And uh, as we get ready for Notre Dame, uh, I think there's a lot to be happy with. Anthony, what were yeah. your main thoughts as you, as you saw the game? Yeah, absolutely. I think that a lot of the stuff that we talked about on Saturday night, um, I think came through uh, when I got to uh, just kind of watch the tape. Uh, physicality took a huge step up, uh, which was awesome to see, not only from the offensive line, but on the, on the perimeter at the receiver position. Um, I thought that everyone, you know, on the offense played really, really hard. Um, I loved uh, what we saw from Kyle. Um, you know, I think that uh, we talked about it on Saturday night, but um, – you know, didn't start great. Uh, we're going to see some things early that I didn't like. Um, got kind of bailed out on the first drive. And then I think we're going to be able to really see what happened on the strip sack and why it was his fault. Um, and then from there, like we said, that was rock bottom. From there, the kid played, man. He balled out, looked really, really good, um, just was accurate as heck, made quick decisions, seemed to be on it. And it seemed to be, hey, that 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 flip or that switch flipped um, and he was ready to go. And I was really impressed with how he responded. Um, and I kind of share with what in Coach Day's thoughts of he saw some adversity. I let him deal with it and he de dealt with it pretty darn well. Um, and and I, th I thought it was good to see and you'll see it come through here. I uh, can't wait to uh, to dive into it. I'll let you get ready to share your screen and get ready to rock on that side. And um you know, I'll go over a few numbers from the game along the way while you prep for that. The, um, you know, the reality is this was an offense that needed some uh, needed some element of like let's go get right and a 500 yard offensive day. Um, uh, you know, a, a 300 yard passing game, 200 yard rushing game, like those were all important pieces of this for sure. Um, but I I thought it was maybe for me even more impressive that the defense looked as good as it did because you got to go out and look the part against the team you're supposed to beat up. And for better or for worse, man, this fan base can be really frustrating sometimes uh, when it's, you know, it, it's a reflection of uh, the game where, you know, if, if Ohio State doesn't completely annihilate somebody, you know, everybody wants to burn it to the ground. And if they go out and they play really well, like they did against Western Kentucky, then it's like, well, okay, fine. You were supposed to do that. Right. Um, so I, I think it's it's a good opportunity here to take a deep breath. We're going to see some really good things on film today. Uh, I think folks are going to like what what we're going to show and um, happy to dive in. So yeah, rip. absolutely. I think that's a great note too that that you mentioned. It's uh, it's never perfect and it never will be perfect. Although our fans want it to be perfect, it's just never going to be. So let's start um, first. The best place to start is drive one. Um, okay, so I think like like what I just mentioned, um, Kyle uh, wasn't sharp early. 
Um, all right, so first first drive of the game, right? 12:20 left to go. Um, we got third and five, and we're in scoring territory. Okay, at the 28 yard line, um, and this is one that you don't even show this this clip on tape tomorrow, or excuse me, on Sunday. Uh, because this is just a bad miss and something that just can't happen. Um, and you could tell like this was a nervy throw. So right, third and five, um, and you see him coming up, right? We have free access down at the bottom of our screen. Like if you want to put 10 guys in the box up in here, if you want to do that, fine, go ahead. We'll take our – we're going to take our one-on-one -on -one matchup down here and just let our guy go to work, all right? He's wide open. This is, has to be a ball. We saw it last week, right? When you complete throws to these guys and give them catchable footballs where they can catch, turn, and get upfield, they make people miss. They turn five-yard gains into 20-yard gains. They turn 10-yard gains into 30, and so on and so forth, right? If we just stick this ball on him and throw it accurately, he's going to catch this ball and have one guy to beat. Instead, we miss, we miss five feet over our head. It slips out of our hand or whatever the case is. And now things aren't feeling great in that stadium. I'm sure, um, you know, it was a little shaky, maybe a couple boo birds here and there. Wasn't feeling too great. Um, right, but Ryan Day on the sideline was livid. Not happy. <laughs> I'll miss that. I, I will say this. There's going to be a handful of people out there who get a laugh, but I've, I've been there before. And when you look over and your coach is just screaming at you specifically, um, it's not the, it's a, it's a very lonely feeling for sure. Uh, very, very lonely, but to Coach Day's credit, uh, kept the boys out there, kept the offense out there. All right, fourth and five. What I love here, we're using motion. You're going to see this become more of a th more of a thing um, here going on. You use motion to determine to help your quarterback see what's going on in front of him. So if somebody runs with the motion man, you know you're getting man to man coverage. If they pass it off, you know you're getting some kind of a zone. So what do we see here with the motion? We have a guy running. All right, perfect. He got man to man. At this point, the quarterback knows exactly who he's going to throw to. OK, so the motion goes out and it's kind of a sick route. Like they use that wide motion to get that guy running. And you can only do this with a certain number of guys where they motion all the way across the formation. I'll back it up. They motion all the way across the formation, fake like they're going outside foot in the ground and they go here. That's really sick. It's a sick concept and it should work. But give the defensive back credit. He kind of feels it. He sits right at the sticks and Emeka's in a tough spot, right? And this ball, this ain't a great throw either. This is a high throw. Look at that. That's that's a clip there that, as a receiver, you don't love, right? You don't love having to jump six feet in the air to make the catch, but you got to do what you got to do to move the sticks on fourth down. Um, and this is one where it's like, hey, we have the best receivers in the country. Uh, let they're going to make a play, and he gets Kyle gets bailed out on this one by an unbelievable. This is an unbelievable catch by Mecca Buka here. It totally is, and uh, I think perhaps a Mecca making that catch kind of helped Kyle take a deep breath because yes. first throw wasn't great on that third and five, uh, and and obviously that one, you know, as soon as he let it go, he probably realized like, uh oh, that's that's slipping a little bit. Uh, but when you can lean on a receiver to go make that kind of a play, it allows you to take a deep breath and settle in. Uh, and to Ohio State's credit, you know they they. They tend to capitalize when other teams give them just that sliver of light and don't, you know, make you pay for your mistakes. Absolutely, uh, I couldn't couldn't agree more. Just takes a little bit of pressure off of him um, and gets him going. So, all right, next play after moving the chains, right? First and ten. We all know what's coming here. We got a uh, we got a touchdown here, but I want to focus on two things. First of all, a little a little football school for everyone, um, just kind of watching. Okay. So normally what quarterbacks are looking for some kind of a tell in the defense to understand where pressure is coming from. This is just one that is easy to show and easy for you when you're watching at home. Like this is the TV copy. So you could see this. You're sitting on your couch. And I promise you, if you're at a party and you yell and you yelled out here, corner blitz, corner blitz, corner blitz, everyone would love you because why is it? Why did why do I know that this is coming? Well, why are they having two guys stacked? dead on top of each other. That just doesn't make any sense. One of these guys has to be coming. So, right, we got two guys stacked. So the offense knows, hey, boom, this guy's blitzing, right? And this guy's covering up behind him. But we all know Travion runs us in. What I want to watch, I want, want you guys to watch is right here. I believe this is Julian Fleming. All right, just watch him on this clip. Locks on, finishes through. And we talked, you asked Coach Day about this on last Tuesday. 
hey, I want our receivers to be physical. This is stuff we show in tape on, on Sundays. Check this out. He gets into his guy, gets him at five yards, attacks him, is aggressive, and then doesn't stop there. Maybe a holding, maybe not, whatever, but they don't call him all the time. But he don't finish, he, or he doesn't let him go. He doesn't let him get off, right? I'm going to take you to the side. I'm taking you in. My dad used to say this. Take your guy, take him to the concession stand, take him to the bathroom, take him to his car. Block him until our guy's in the end zone, right? And because of that effort, he now takes out two more guys down here, right? He, he cleans out two guys, and now – Travion is stepping into the end zone. And Coach Day said that exactly. He goes, when your receiver's block, it turns good to great. Direct quote out of his mouth. It turns good to great. This, if, if we just if we just lollygag out here and just get in his way, sure, we get eight yards. Maybe Travion makes a cornerback miss. Instead, we punish a guy for coming to Columbus that day, put him on the ground, and we, we're in the end zone. Um, we're dancing. It's huge. And I frankly, I think right now, Julian Fleming, to me, has stood out as the best blocking wide receiver in that entire position group through the first three games of the season. Uh, I'm not saying that other guys haven't done well. I actually think Emeka and Marvin have had some nice blocks. But in terms of consistency over the three games, I don't even think it's close. I think Julian's been the most engaged in that part of his game. Um and, you know, look, receivers don't love blocking, but uh, when you have performances like that, that can really spring you, uh, that's huge. So totally. Well, and it gets you, not only springs you, it springs the team, right? Gets you sure. on the field more, gets the team hyped. And, uh, you know, you, you, you'll see, you'll start seeing Julian playing a little bit more. Um, but I love that clip. So next clip here. All right, this is the rock bottom. Okay, we got a strip sack. But I just kind of want the, the audience to understand really what's going on. So, just running this clip full all the way through, right? We got play action, doesn't make a decision, gets hit, fumbles the football. So what do we have up? Okay. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Let's get it set. All right. What do we have up here? So we're going to use play action to kind of draw some safeties up, and we're taking a shot, okay? So we're going to have Marvin Harrison Jr. on a deep post, some kind of a crosser here, okay? Then you have a Mecca on another crosser over here, okay? So there's your route concept, right? Some call it a scissor, some call it whatever. The thing is, your safety help if you're Western Kentucky is right here. You're at eight yards, okay? There's your two safeties, all right? So from your perspective, a fan's point of view, there's nobody deep, right? This has to be a massive, massive play. Now I'm gonna freeze frame it here, right? We use play action fake. Now look at our safeties. They're at five yards and three yards, okay? There's nothing over the top. Now, what will happen is when these guys get into the route and they leave their, they leave the screen here, right? Marvin, you'll see it from the back angle, is covered up a little bit, but mecca has got some space. Now, what will happen is when these receivers start to mesh, this corner will fall off this top corner. He'll fall off deep and take, um, and take Marvin, and this guy should fall off deep and take mecca. However, when you see it from the back, you'll see it from the back side here. We'll get it going, get it going. All right, Marvin's guy's locked on him, okay? And he stays locked. Here's a Mecca coming, coming through. This ball needs to be put right about there, and we're dancing in the end zone again. But Kyle hesitates because Marvin's covered and the, a Mecca's corner falls off of him. So when he hesitates, there's no check down in this play. This is a max protection. We're taking the shot. He hesitates, doesn't throw the touchdown to right here. And because of that, boom, gets hit. So we always take uh, – yesterday, we, we talked about – or the days in the past, um, we've talked about, hey, the offensive line struggling potentially, not blocking it up. Well, sometimes sacks are the quarterback's fault. Um, sure. And I said that after the game. Hey, this was my fault. It was my fault on this play. And that's what he's talking about. He didn't pull the trigger there for whatever the reason. Um, and because that ball wasn't out on time, he's taken one that results in the ball popping out and a turnover at midfield. Yeah, and I agree with you. I mean, this to me, this feels like the kind of play that can define the season because up until this point, it, it hadn't been a great start. You know, McCord mm -hmm. wasn't horrendous, but he 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 wasn't great. The you know the first. I guess you'd call it drive and a half. Um, and obviously this, you know, this fumble's lost, right? So I, I I was impressed by his ability to just flush it and say, look, here's a lot of game left. It's my team. Let's go figure it out. 
And I think the thing that I, I uh, kind of laughed about, you know, when, when uh, I think we'll, I assume you're going to get to the Marvin Harrison clip, the, the long touchdown. I didn't put the Marvin in here, but. So the, the, the Marvin, the Marvin touchdown, uh, some of this I put on Kyle in a good way. Some of it I put on Coach Day in a good way. Um, you know, Western Kentucky had had just, you know, finally gotten points. And you could hear it on the TV broadcast because of the way the microphones were set up. Uh, Coach Day was yelling, you know, yelling to play into the team as they were coming off the sideline onto the field. And you heard him say at least twice, greedy route. And I remember hearing that and going, oh, boy, here we go. Uh, let's see what the gritty route looks like. And, and he put it right on the money to Marv. And so I, I think about those things. It's like, okay, not a great start, but the ability to just flush it and go hit a big play. Uh, and, and not to mention it was back-to-back one play scoring drives. Like to me, that's what I want to see in a quarterback. And Brennan too, to that point, it's like, all right. And think going to his mind, right. It hasn't been a good start, right. We're two weeks into this now. Everyone's kind of, wishy-washy on me if you're a common core everyone's wishy-washy and I come out in this game and I don't look clean on the first drive I turn it over on the second drive like you're starting to get nervous and that's a potential time where it's like hey backs against the wall don't know what coach day is going to do if I continue to not look clean it's like hey it was really impressive to me being that I've experienced something like that before where it's like he was able to just stop it right there that's my rock bottom and now I'm going perfect ball to Marvin it's not in here because it was a it's a sweet route. It's a straight go, and Marvin faster than everybody, and an accurate heck, accurate as heck um, on that throw. But uh, really good response, and I think his whole game afterwards was, was fantastic. Um, so you make a great point there. Um, all right, stepping forward, I want to show this defensive clip. Still in the first quarter, so this is off the turnover drive, um, right, Western Kentucky's driving. Uh, one thing that you and I, a common theme of our Saturdays and Sunday podcasts are – Need more out of the need more out of the defense. Need more physicality. Need more out of the front. This is a great time to prove that. Third and four, we're backed up again in the red zone. Don't love where we're at on the field. Let's not let this drive turn into six points. We need to do whatever it takes to not give up six points here. And we'll watch this clip here from our defensive end. Boom. We're tackling that guy. We're touching. I don't love the push in the interior here. We they're getting a little push there, but it doesn't matter. We are screaming off the edge and. One guy making a stand. I'm not letting these guys get in here. I'm taking that guy's legs out, and we're putting the we're putting the fist up, fourth up, fourth down. We're getting off the field, forcing forcing a um, forcing a field goal. So defensive ends don't just make impacts sacking the quarterback. Defensive ends make impacts in the run game and can be elite athletes on the edges to stop drives just like this. Yeah, that was one of eight tackles for loss. Uh, uh, well, actually, he made he may have picked up half a yard, but there were eight tackles for loss in the game in total. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to totally back off of the whole. I, I'm frustrated by the the lack of sacks and the lack of pressure created, you know, routinely by our defensive ends. But you know, I'll I'll, I'll give credit where it's due when I see it. And I thought Kenyatta Jackson made a really solid play there um it's that's that's it's huge definitely it's definitely still room for improvement um from from that area but i think that's a good step there um all right play i love here i want to focus obviously um things are starting to happen right marvin has scored since then a mecca is now or not mecca didn't score quite yet travion has scored um so we're we're starting to roll right things are starting to look good ohio state's looking like itself but this was in the midst of the onslaught that that second quarter was. So we're going to get Chip Trainum an opportunity here with a little zone to the left side. But what I really want to look at is I like the push of our offensive line. It's okay. It's enough for in the zone game. You're like trying to just move the guys a little bit. You're moving them side to side here. We make a nice gaping hole. Chip hits this like a train, dude. He comes downhill. He's with bad intentions, right? Going fast. But you can't see it right here, but I just want to point out the hustle um, up top. Again, good to great, good to great, good to great. Just enough to stay in the way. And who is it? Julian Fleming. Like, come on, this guy's yep. all over the place and, and blocking for blocking for his guys. And this is another one that, that gets shown and just hypes everybody up. Great get to the second level here. Good attachment here, right? This is just this is all good. I think up here is where we take a step forward and just 
stick in it, stick in it, keep blocking, keep going, chase him down, meet your boy in the end zone. Like that's that's teach safe stuff right there. It was awesome. And, um, you know, for the second straight series to have a, a one play scoring drive, I thought was really impactful and, and put Western Kentucky on its heels. Cause at that point of the game, there was still this feeling of like, all right, they're, they're alive, but they're barely breathing. Like, you know, start throwing some haymakers and, and, and put this hilltopper offense on its heels. Yeah. Put your, put your, put your foot on their throat type of mentality. Uh, but it goes back to two, Brennan, what we talked about last week, like coach has been, Hey, we're not getting a lot of drives. Like, no, they were lacking the big play. And we had, uh, it was a great display of huge plays on Saturday, which is exactly what Ohio, Ohio State needed uh, from both the pass and the run game. Uh, okay, here we go. S- second quarter still. Again, we're in the uh, the Ohio State second quarter domination. Third down and eight. All right. I think that this play shows one thing that I love. I love to see out of Ohio State. Um, so we're going to get a straight drop back JT getting a little pressure. I think this is kind of self-made pressure. He didn't have to like necessarily sprint out as early as he did, but we got guys chasing again. We talked about him. We love this guy. We loved Austin Reed. It's just a stud tough as nails, but sees this guy open, right? Just found a soft spot in the zone. And guess what? This stuff's going to happen. Okay. It doesn't matter who you're playing. It happened against Jumpstown state happened against Western Kentucky. What Ohio state needs to do is, Everyone to the football, all 11 hats to the football. That's something that all coaches say because good things happen, right? Check out this. Check out this hustle up top here, right? We're just going to chase after our guy. Boom. Put a stick on him. Balls out. And now another big play. I mean, just awesome. Hey, I gave up the completion. It wasn't even it was specifically on him. He was just kind of sitting in his own. But the ball was caught. I'm going to go get him. And he hustled hard. The guy cut back right into him. He laid the boom. Ball was out. And Ohio State recovers the football. Yeah, that was a really good play by Jordan Hancock. Uh, Just hustling, and- hustling, hustling, right? He's chasing, he's chasing, boom. Right on, helmet right on the ball. Ohio State football in plus territory. Hey, you're in plus territory. Let's go take, let's go take some shots here, okay? Very next, very next drive. Awesome play here. This is what you love as a quarterback. Yeah, using the play action to sneak Cade Stover into the flat. We didn't talk much about Kate Stover um, on Saturday night, but he put together a nice game. Um, yeah. Had I think five catches, ninety yards, something along those lines. But here's a chunk play coming. This guy's so athletic; he's such a freak, and just rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Oh, and hey, Brennan, guess what? Look who gets a look who gets the block. I mean, <laughs> what I say on Saturday: success has clues. Julian Fleming, back. We rewind this tape five years. He lights this dude up, blows him up, gets fifteen yard penalty. But hey, hit by. I'm going to get in his way. And I just got our guy 15 extra yards. Like that's the stuff coach points at on Sunday. Like, Hey, Hey receivers, look at what Julian's doing. Look at this. Look at this. Boom. Here's 10 extra yards. Yeah. And what a great example for some of the young receivers too, that, you know, that, that haven't gotten on the field much yet. Obviously Carnell Tate, you know, as a freshman is the one that's starting to get a little bit of run, but um, you know, the reality is guys like, Jaden Ballard, who have been here for a little bit and have struggled to get on the field. Um, when they've had their chances, I haven't seen a ton of that from them. You know, I want to I want to see that moving forward with some of the big guys that are that are coming in. Like that's that's the example. It's it's not just the flash and the playmaking ability of Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Ibuko or Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave, Jackson Smith and Jigba right on down the line. Like it's go do the little things when you don't have the ball in your hands. Uh, that's part of why these guys have been developed at such a high level and why they are first round picks all the time. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better. Couldn't have said it better myself. So flipping it back over to the defensive side, um, just want to, again, this goes back to the defensive line conversation. Just like you said, it's not there yet. I think it's getting better. Okay. Uh, we have fourth and 10, fourth and 10 on the plus territory. We drop back to pass. Now, we're all we all want sacks. We want sacks. We want sacks. We want sacks. But when you're able to drop eight guys in coverage, when you drop eight, is you'll hear that on the broadcast a lot. Oh, Ohio State dropped eight. All that means is, excuse me, they can only bring three guys. Okay, so you're only getting pressure with three. So in theory, the offensive line should block this up. Okay, and you should have plenty of time to sit back there and throw it. However, JT and Jack have a race to the quarterback, and they just take their guys straight back into the thrower. 
um, and, and make that. This is impossible. I don't care if it's Tom Brady or if it's Austin Reed back there. Like this, you can't have this. And this is one of the things that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. But this this quarterback pressure right here um, is something that you want to. We want to see more consistently from our guys. Just more consistently pressure in that pocket, making it really challenging on the thrower. No, and, and all things considered, I, I think Western Kentucky's offensive line was okay. Um, mm-hmm. And they've obviously had a history of some success with with the, the numbers they've put up as a team. Um, but I, I, I thought the Buckeye defensive line played fine. I, I don't think it was an elite game from that unit, but I, I thought they played fine. Uh, but they, they got to go into South Bend this weekend with their hair on fire because that's Absolutely. what it's going to take. This is the throw here that that you're we're going to want to see on Saturday. I just love this throw. I love throwing. Um, I've said it a number of times. Tight ends are a quarterback's best friend. Look at the shot across the middle. You're going to get Cade coming across. Or it's not. That's not even Cade. Excuse me. Just that short, that inside crosser. I think this throw is just fantastic. Right, a great shot. I got to trust myself. It is Cade, but yeah, a great is- shot and great throw. Uh, but one thing that I want to just point out. Look at this. Watch this. Oh, look at this thrower's pocket, right? We are perfect. That's that's how you draw it up, right? Hey, we're one-on-one here. We comboed the blitz. Hey, our running back perfectly picked up their blitzer, bringing him inside, and he's just stonewalled him. We're one-on-one here. We're dominating here. Kyle McCord has not one worry in the world to make this throw. And when you get that kind of a pocket, that's the ball you can deliver, and we can get a huge, huge chunk play. So good. So good. Oh, we got an ad there? That was an ad. Buy whatever they're selling. Um, all right. Touchdown pass here. Get a little action. Look at this throw. Um, oftentimes, this is one where I'm sure Kyle's watched 15 times um, since, uh, since Saturday night, or probably 100 times. I know I would have if I made this throw. Um, a nice little route. I don't think it worked the way they wanted it to. They wanted to like have a little out and up. This guy doesn't really bite on this the way they wanted. He kind of stays back, but perfect throw beats good defense every single time. And boom, really well done. Emeka, great route, great throw to that back corner. And uh, and the, in Ohio State, another touchdown. Great, accurate throw from, from Kyle McCord. I mean, honestly, that was, that was probably my favorite touchdown of the season. Um, mm-hmm. that, that defensive back stayed back on that play at the beginning. I actually thought he did bite kind of hard or or I don't know if he was in a zone where he thought he was going to go cover something lower um but all of a sudden a mecca you know burst past him into the end zone um it was an awesome throw uh and look I think we walk away from that game saying look Kyle is Kyle's definitely the guy and he made some really really accurate big throws he was efficient with the ball he didn't throw a pick you know, what do you want? I mean, 19 of 23 for 318 and three touchdowns without without throwing an interception. Um, and you know, had a had a bad early in completion and had a, a fumble early in the game, and then just said, I'm done. Like this it's it's over. It's time to start playing real football. Uh and he went out there and he, he put on a, a unbelievable show. It was awesome. It was exactly what you wanted to see from the quarterback. I think you saw some improvements everywhere else. I think an improvement from the offensive line. Still think that there's some way to go. I don't really love – like I think it could have been still a little bit more physical, but still did what you needed to do. The running backs ran hard. The receivers were great. Um, I thought on defense they played pretty well. Getting some turnovers I think was awesome. Obviously had to pick six to end the game, which is always really cool. Um, So all in all, I I think Coach Day is probably happy with his performance. I'm excited to hear what he has to say tomorrow. Um, as I'm sure the conversation isn't going to be much about Western Kentucky's game, but uh, the no. one coming up on Saturday because it is going to be fantastic. I think I just got a text. The uh, lowest ticket price currently is like over a thousand bucks right now. I think it's going to be such a cool experience on Saturday night. Sounds about right. Uh, Buckeye defense off to a hell of a start this year. In fact, the 20 points they've given up in aggregate this season through those first three games are the fewest they have allowed in the first three games of a season in almost 50 years. Back in 1975, they had given up 16 points uh, in the first three games of the year. This is their best start since then. Um, and and look, offensively, that, that explosive second quarter was one of the best scoring quarters they've had. In fact, it was 73 years ago that they had last 
um, you know, put up uh, an offensive explosion in a quarter like that. Um, the only other time Ohio State had scored 35 points in a quarter uh, since a 42-point quarter against Miami back in 2019 uh, was in a win over Iowa in 1950. Um, yeah, I mean, just a, a, a really, really impressive uh, stretch of football there, and, and they did what they were supposed to do, so that uh, that should be celebrated for sure. Uh, as far as you know, the defense goes. Again, I, I realize Indiana and Youngstown State and and um, you know Western Kentucky aren't going to pose the biggest, stiffest offensive challenges that you're going to see all year. But nationally, right now, Ohio State is third in total defense. They are second in scoring defense. Uh, they are top ten in passing yards allowed. They're sixth pass efficiency defense. They're eighth. Uh, they're tied for fifth in fewest first downs allowed, 37 through three games. Um, and, you know, on top of that, the offense, largely because of the big numbers they put up last week, you know, they're a top 25 total offense right now. They're passing 17th in the country. Uh, they're tied for 20th in scoring. So, you know, look, a, a lot of the a lot of the superlative numbers that you want to see are there. Um, and now it's time to go light up against a team you really got to give it a good roll against. Um, I'm glad Ohio State didn't have to open the year this year against Notre Dame. I think Ryan Day's probably pretty glad about it too. You got to replace a new quarterback and three offensive linemen. Things might take a little bit to gel, but the the signs that we're seeing here certainly look solid. Ohio State's secondary looks as good as it's looked in a while. Um, a long time. You know, Denzel Burke um, might be playing the best cornerback play since maybe like Jeff Okuda. Um, yeah. I mean, he, he looks really, really good and. You know, I think Notre Dame is going to present a good challenge, and we're going to dive into this throughout the course of the week. Um, I think their receivers are good. They're not nearly as good as Ohio State's are, but I, I'm not sure anybody's are. Uh, but Audric Estime is a real deal, and Ohio State better be ready to stop the run, and they better they better bring a physicality to the line of scrimmage if they're going to um, if they're going to go to South Bend and, and pull off a big top ten win on the road. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a heck of a battle. Um, I agree with you. I think I'm excited to 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 break the teams down um, and, and kind of see where Ohio state's going to have the advantage. I think they'll, I think they'll certainly have the advantage um, from a skill position standpoint. Um, I don't think Notre Dame is going to be able to match them on the outsides. However, I think Notre Dame brings a serious, serious test up front um, and in the run game. Um, it's going to be a heck of a game. It's, I mean, I think first of all, Saturday as a, just a college football slate is going to be ridiculous. And then the nightcap being Ohio state versus Notre Dame. It like does you could draw up the perfect Saturday. It does not get better than than what's about the, what's coming down the pipe in a couple of days here. <laughs> uh, can't wait to talk about it all throughout the week, and uh, certainly looking forward to being in South Bend on Saturday. Hope you enjoyed our inside the film room session. We do this every Monday as we look back at what happened with the Buckeyes the uh, the previous week. Hopefully, we're going to have lots of good clips to show you this upcoming Monday. Um, there's a lot of this Notre Dame team that, to me, reminds me of what we saw from Michigan the last couple of years. Got a good offensive line. They got a powerful, physical, good running back. Um, Ohio State is is mentally, I think they're going to be ready for it. We'll find out if they can physically handle the challenge. And uh, we'll certainly show you some highlights from the game uh, that are worth breaking down next week. But in the meantime, we'll talk to you tomorrow morning live at 7 a.m. Uh, about some of the things we want to hear from Coach Day as he gets ready to address the media tomorrow at noon. Um, Wednesday night, as normal, we'll hear from players after practice. Uh, by the way, we'll also hear from Jim Knowles tomorrow after Ryan's done talking, and uh, we'll continue our preview against Notre Dame throughout the course of the week. For Anthony Meglin, I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for watching Inside the Film Room. We'll see you tomorrow morning right back here on the same channel. Please subscribe to our show. It's the best way to help the show, and uh, we certainly appreciate your support. See you then.